For all its beauty and splendor, the wilderness can be a cruel teacher. Hiking is a great way to reap the benefits of what nature has to offer. But venturing into the wild has its risks. If you're not adequately prepared for a strenuous hike, especially in a challenging environment like the Grand Canyon, you could encounter a range of dire results. Hiking in rugged terrain with steep inclines and declines can quickly lead to physical exhaustion, especially in extreme heat. Without sufficient water and proper hydration strategies, you're at risk of becoming dehydrated, which can lead to heat-related illness and death. Please click the subscribe and like buttons. This is Outdoor Disasters. The Grand Canyon is a massive geological formation located in the state of Arizona, United States. It is one of the most iconic natural landmarks in the world and draws millions of visitors each year. Visiting the Grand Canyon offers an opportunity to marvel at the Earth's geological history, connect with nature, and experience the grandeur of one of the world's most remarkable natural wonders. It was designated a national park in 1919 to protect its unique geological and scenic features. The Colorado River flows through the Grand Canyon, carving the deep chasm over millions of years. Numerous hiking trails allow visitors to explore the Grand Canyon's depths. The north and south rims of the canyon offer breathtaking panoramic views from various viewpoints along its rims, leaving visitors in awe. The Grand Canyon stands as a testament to the beauty and power of nature, an awe-inspiring masterpiece sculpted over millions of years. Its layers of rock tell the tales of Earth's history, as you stand on its rim, you are a fleeting moment in the grand tapestry of existence, witnessing the unending dance of light and shadow that plays upon its walls. The Grand Canyon reminds us that nature's artistry is a masterpiece that transcends human creation. Hiking the Grand Canyon offers a unique blend of physical exertion, natural beauty, and personal fulfillment. It's an opportunity to embark on a transformative journey, connect with nature, and leave with a deep appreciation for the Earth's wonders. In the embrace of the canyon, you find a sanctuary for reflection and wonder. It is a place where challenges and triumphs merge. With every step along its trails, you are humbled by the magnitude of the world around you. For one hiking group, their Grand Canyon excursion would be a catastrophe. In June of 1996, a group of Boy Scouts and their leaders faced a daunting challenge on one of the Grand Canyon's most demanding trails. Five teenage boys, Mark Coons, Jordan Weingard, David Phillips, Andy Davis, and Joel Keeper, aged 15, embarked on a journey through the Grand Canyon accompanied by three skilled adult guides, Guy Davis, the scout leader, along with brothers Lauren and Earl Pace, who were experienced hikers and navigators. Among the boys, Mark, Jordan, and David had been friends since their early years and had been scouts for several years, with David being the most seasoned hiker among them. Reflecting on their friendship, Mark states, Every one of us boys, we'd grown up in the same neighborhood, gone to school together, and so we were excited to spend some time to bond and to have fun with each other. The Grand Canyon is a massive natural wonder that spans over 270 miles and is up to 18 miles wide, or 435 and 29 kilometers in some areas. It's a place of stunning beauty. However, with its size and rugged terrain, it's no surprise that the park has its fair share of dangers. Every year, people die in the park due to a variety of reasons, including falls, dehydration, and other accidents. Around 900 people have died at the Grand Canyon since the 1800s. The Grand Canyon was officially established as a national park on February 26, 1919. An average of 12 deaths happen at the Grand Canyon every year. There are roughly 5 million visitors to the Grand Canyon. Every year, people die in the park due to a variety of reasons, including falls, dehydration, aircraft crashes, drownings, and many other instances. Environmental factors are the common cause of fatalities at the Grand Canyon, including freezing, flash floods, lighting, and dehydration. Temperatures in the Grand Canyon can reach extreme highs, especially in the summer. Many hikers are not prepared for how hot it can get, up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit at the bottom of the canyon. Each year, around 300 hikers run into trouble in the Grand Canyon, and around 200 of them will need to be airlifted out. Roughly around 10 will die. Most environmental deaths happen from dehydration, which can lead to heat stroke or cardiac arrest. The Grand Canyon is one of the most awe-inspiring landscapes in the world. However, with its beauty comes danger. The Grand Canyon 
is the most deadly national park in the United States. After a couple of hours of trekking, the boys finally reach the northern rim of the canyon. With a mix of amazement and wonder, the group gazes at the grandeur of the canyon, its towering cliffs leaving a lasting impression, widening to an incredible 18 miles and plunging nearly a mile deep at certain points it stands as the largest canyon on Earth. This monumental spectacle transforms it into one of the world's most extreme hiking environments. When you turn that corner and take in the vast panoramic view of cliffs that descend a mile down, there's simply nothing quite like it, Mark expressed. Their next phase involves descending as they venture along the unmarked course of Little Nankoweep Creek Bed. This stretch presents a demanding challenge involving steep declines that drop a staggering 4,000 feet or 1,200 meters down to the Colorado River. Once there, they intend to replenish their water supplies before opting for a less strenuous path on their ascent back. The entire expedition is expected to span around seven days. An hour past the canyon rim, the group finds themselves at the end of the designated trail. From this point onward, they will be navigating uncharted territory all the way to the canyon's base. The path becomes a steep descent across loose gravel and boulders. The trail ended, and then it got very rocky. That's when we saw the difficulty of what the hike was going to be, Jordan recounted. The journey was quickly evolving into a more perilous endeavor. Without a radio and beyond the reach of cell phone signals, any injuries would mean they're entirely on their own. Confronted by the challenging terrain, they make the strategic decision to remove their bulky backpacks and pass them down before carefully maneuvering themselves. Even the seasoned adult guides find themselves grappling with the unforgiving landscape. Guy Davis, one of the guides, suffers a harsh fall along the rocky terrain. Reflecting on the experience, Guy explained, So at that point, it wasn't just a hike, it was more of a climb. I hit a log straight on, and I just managed to catch it with part of the body you should never hit a log with, and literally knocked the wind out of me considerably. Though the fall was severe, Davis managed to avert disaster. Two hours into their descent, the exhausted group finally reaches the canyon's floor, having descended over a thousand feet. At this point, there's no turning back. Throughout the day, the temperature has relentlessly climbed, reaching nearly 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. Unbeknownst to the hikers, an unexpected heat wave has enveloped the canyon. Temperatures are expected to soar to 108 degrees Fahrenheit or 42 degrees Celsius, much hotter than anyone had anticipated as they had initially expected temperatures in the 90s. This unforgiving heat, combined with the lack of shade in this section of the canyon, leaves them exposed to the scorching sun, gradually draining their energy. As the first day of the hike progresses, the situation takes a downturn. Their water supply is rapidly depleting, with three quarters already consumed. The only source of water lies downstream in the Colorado River, but reaching it requires descending over 2,000 feet, about 600 meters, with another day and a half of arduous hiking ahead. Given the intense heat, it's clear that their water will run out long before they can access the river. As evening approaches, the group decides to halt and set up camp for the night. We were just grateful to be off of our feet. We were grateful to have the sun down off of us, Jordan Weingar said. David Phillips takes it upon himself to uplift the morale of his friends. Then, a glimmer catches his eye. The Colorado River comes into view. Despite a sense of optimism about reaching the river the following day, the truth remains that they are still faced with an arduous day's hike away, and their water supply is rapidly dwindling. The fixation on every precious drop of water is becoming all-consuming. That night, I was starting to feel a little shocked and surprised that something I thought would be so fun was starting to turn into something that was so scary and so worrisome to me, and I felt like I had started to lose control of the situation that I was in," Kuhn said. The group collectively agrees that an early start to beat the sun is their best chance at survival. The sun rises the following day, yet the group fails to awaken as planned. By 8 a.m., the unforgiving sun bears down upon them. I don't remember what time it was, but the sun was on us, it was hot, Jordan recalls. Sweating profusely, they're losing up to four pints of water per hour with inadequate means to replenish. Dehydration is setting in rapidly and the relentless terrain of the Grand Canyon offers no respite. They encounter a rock cliff they must traverse, a feat that drains them of their already waning energy. The water scarcity has become a critical concern. 
Displaying his experience as a hiker, David selflessly shares the remainder of his water. Still, they're faced with a half-day hike to the river, and their water supply has been depleted. Guy, struggling immensely under the relentless heat, falls behind the rest of the group. He likens the sensation to being trapped in an oven and expresses, I was physically exhausted. Succumbing to the unbearable conditions, Guy reaches a point where he can go no further. However, by the time the group realizes he's not with them, he's already hundreds of feet farther down the canyon. It's now impossible for Guy to make it to the river. He shouts down to the group, I can't continue, I need to take a break. Lauren Pace argues that they must wait for Guy, but Jordan holds a different viewpoint. If we all don't go now, we're all going to die. I'm not just going to sit here and wait and die, he asserts. Jordan was convincing, and Lauren shouts to Guy they're heading to the river to fetch water and will return. Guy responds, Take care of the boys, Mark recalls. I have never heard a tone like that in anyone's voice before. That kind of fear or anything like that ever in my life. The group proceeds with heavy hearts, forced to leave their comrade behind. Continuing their journey, they eventually decide to take a much-needed break. Drawing from his recollections of last year's trek on this trail, Lauren Pace remembers a nearby creek. Without hesitation, David Phillips takes the initiative and decides to make a run for the creek. However, this decision is not without risk as it places additional strain on David's already dehydrated body. Unfortunately, upon reaching the creek bed, David is met with disappointment. It's bone dry. Deflated, he returns to the group with the grim news. It was very difficult. We had no idea where water was, how we were going to get there, when we get there, or how much longer we would last, Jordan said. The group soldiers on down the canyon, but now the temperature has escalated to a searing 112 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius. After six hours of hiking, Lauren Pace's strength finally gives out. It becomes clear to him that trekking at night would place less strain on their dehydrated bodies. The unanimous sentiment is that staying put would lead to their demise. Consequently, the boys make a decisive choice. They will venture forth and bring back water for their leaders. Up the canyon, Guy Davis's condition continues to deteriorate. His body's fluid levels have dropped to such an extent that his sweat glands have ceased to function. Without the cooling effect of sweat, any physical exertion might trigger an uncontrollable rise in his body temperature. A core temperature of 108 degrees Fahrenheit or 42 degrees Celsius could spell the beginning of brain damage. I can't believe a time in my life when I wanted to sweat. I knew that if I could sweat, it would cool down my body, and I physically tried to will myself to do that, and I couldn't do it, Mr. Davis said. Guy finds himself in a predicament where attempting to hike out could be fatal. Meanwhile, further down the canyon, the boys are making promising progress, catching sight of the river about a mile away. However, they soon realize they've gone astray, encountering a steep 200-foot or 60-meter sheer cliff leading down to the river, a dead end. The river remains out of reach, and their water supply has been exhausted. Their leader has collapsed, leaving the group's fate resting on the shoulders of three 15-year-old boys. Hitting this insurmountable cliff feels like the last straw, and with the group not expected back for another six days, the prospect of a timely search party seems grim. The boys manage to find a small crevice in the cliffs, seeking shelter from the relentless sun. They're exhausted, and hope is dwindling. In my mind, I knew we were going to die. You're weak. Your body hurts and aches. You have headaches. I just remember not knowing if I'd ever get up from that position. I remembered that could be the last place I'd be. Under that rock, Weingar said. As they lay there, seemingly awaiting their fate, Mark Coons slips into unconsciousness. Stirring from a dream of being in a coffin, Mark is jolted into action by the realization that he doesn't want to die. Without a clear plan, Mark decides that staying put isn't an option. Summoning his determination, he resolves to descend the imposing 60-meter rock face. He tosses his backpack down. At this point, in their weakened state, climbing down the cliff would be a monumental effort. Lacking ropes, harnesses, or climbing expertise, they are attempting a free solo climb without prior experience. Yet their options have boiled down to this daring climb or certain death. Mark, Jordan, and David commenced their descent, with Mark leading the way. I thought we were going to die anyways. To me, death was going to happen, and so it seemed like anything would be better, even if it was a ridiculous plan, Jordan said. 
Mark reassures his companions that the climb is doable and astonishingly, all three manage to navigate the ascent. However, the exertion takes a toll on David showing signs of heat stroke. Meanwhile, up the canyon, Guy Davis is grappling with his own struggles. Recognizing that any hope of rescue must come from above, Guy summons the last of his remaining energy to lay out his mylar blanket. This seemingly simple task proves incredibly arduous given his condition, leaving him utterly depleted. Guy is now entirely alone and vulnerable. Just when it seems the situation couldn't become more dire, a rattlesnake slithers into Davis's vicinity, leaving him powerless to evade the potentially lethal encounter. The Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, known for its aggressiveness and venom potency that can lead to death within six hours, engages in a tense standoff with Guy. Their eyes lock, and after an agonizing hour, the snake eventually moves on, bringing Davis a palpable sense of relief. Descending the canyon, the boy's ears catch the distant sound of the river, fueling their hope that it's within reach. However, with each turn they take, the river remains elusive and their struggle intensifies. David Phillips' condition has taken a severe turn for the worse. Trembling and afflicted by blurred vision, he suddenly finds himself leaning against a tree before collapsing. His eyes roll back, signaling a full-blown heat stroke. Mark remains by his side as Jordan rushes towards the river. Eventually reaching its banks, Jordan leaps in, although his relief is fleeting as he quickly returns to David's side, urgently attempting to cool him down. Despite their efforts, David shows no response and their need for water becomes even more critical. This prompts Mark to make his way down to the river. Like Jordan, he tentatively immerses himself in the refreshing waters of the Colorado River, a much-needed source of replenishment. While filling up bottles, Mark spots a group of rafters downstream, an incredible stroke of luck. Had the timing been just a minute earlier or later, the rafters might have passed by without discovering the boys. Coincidentally, the rafting party consists of doctors and paramedics, who swiftly establish a camp where David lies and works tirelessly through the night. Eventually, a doctor delivers the devastating news. It was dark, so I can't really put a time on it, but somewhere around 10 that night, the one that said he was a doctor came over and said, I'm sorry to inform you, but your friend has just passed away, Mark recounted. The loss was overwhelming for the boys. By the following morning, when rescue helicopters arrive, the remaining teenagers have made their way down the river. Thanks to his emergency blanket, Guy Davis is swiftly located, while Lauren Pace is eventually discovered wandering alone in the canyon. The sorrow over David Phillips' passing hangs heavy among them. Today, Mark Coons has become a dentist, and Jordan Weingar serves as a police officer. Both carry with them the indelible memory of that fateful day in the Grand Canyon. They maintain a close connection with David's family. Reflecting on the events of June 1996, Mark shared, It's surreal, and it shifts your perspective on death when someone you've known, spent time with just hours before, full of life, happiness, and vitality, suddenly vanishes. Hiking the Grand Canyon offers a unique blend of physical exertion, natural beauty, and personal fulfillment. It's an opportunity to embark on a transformative journey, connect with nature, and leave with a deep appreciation for the Earth's wonders. The Grand Canyon's stunning and ever-changing landscapes provide a feast for the eyes. It is a place of immense natural beauty and wonder, offering incredible joys and potential real dangers. Being stranded or lost on a hike in the Grand Canyon or areas with similar terrain with limited water can be challenging and potentially dangerous. Prioritize rationing your remaining water. Consume small sips rather than gulps, and try to conserve as much water as possible. Avoid alcohol and caffeine as they can contribute to dehydration. Seek shelter from the sun to avoid direct heat exposure. Look for overhanging rocks, caves, or any shaded areas. Minimizing sun exposure can help reduce water loss through sweat. If you have any signaling devices like a whistle, mirror, or bright clothing, use them to attract attention. Create large signals on the ground using rocks or other available materials that can be seen from the air. In a survival situation, conserving energy is crucial. Limit physical activity during the hottest parts of the day and avoid unnecessary exertion. As temperatures drop, cooler air tends to sink. Sleeping at a lower elevation may provide some relief from the heat. If you have any materials like clothing, tarps, or even large leaves, fashion a sunshade to provide additional protection from the sun. 
Unless you are absolutely certain of where you are and how to find help, it's often safer to stay in one place rather than wander aimlessly. Search and rescue teams have a better chance of locating you if you remain in a concentrated area. Use the hug a tree technique. If you become lost, stay in one place and hug a tree. This makes you easier to locate and increases your visibility to searchers. Remember, prevention is key. Before embarking on a hike in the Grand Canyon, make sure you're well prepared with enough water, appropriate clothing, and navigation tools. Let someone know your itinerary and expected return time so that if you don't return as planned, they can alert authorities. If you find yourself in a dire situation, staying calm, making rational decisions, and prioritizing your survival needs will significantly improve your chances of making it through the ordeal. Crucial survival information so you can make it through an outdoor disaster.